Hi, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here, and I'd like to help you a little bit. If you're not very familiar with alternate picking, I want to give you some tips on how you could start practicing to develop that. Um, so you can start using it on a daily basis and then move it into your practice and the songs that you're learning and everything like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take uh, just a little segment of a pentatonic scale and look at that, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play this. I'm going to play in the key of A minor pentatonic. I'm going to play 5, 8, 5, 7, and that's enough. Okay, 5, 8, and 5, 7. Now, if you don't do a lot of alternate picking, this would be a prime example of how you could start getting into it. Alternate picking is when you pick down and up as opposed to just picking everything down. Okay, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do alternate picking, but let's just talk about a real fundamental way of doing this, which is literally just picking down and then you pick up afterwards. So instead of going down, 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 down and making a little pattern out of this, what we want to do is we want to convert that into down, up, down, up. Now before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about the alternate pick itself. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just palm muting just to give it a little bit more definition as I'm playing as opposed to just playing it open like that. Okay, the alternate pick, basically what you're trying to do are a couple of things. First of all, you're trying to make the down and the up sound similar to each other. Okay, so when you're playing, you're trying to focus on the attack of both the down and the up so they have a similar sound, so it doesn't sound like your down pick is so much different than your up stroke, for instance. Okay, the second part of that is, is be careful not to turn the pick way too much. I see a lot of players when they play, you know, you'll kind of see how my, my guitar is at an angle already. If I was to turn the pick even more, the problem is, is I lose the definition of what the pick is really trying to do against the string, which is of course make it vibrate, but I'm also adding a bit of a percussive effect by picking it through that string. If I turn the string, the pick sideways, excuse me, I might be able to go really fast, but all, all, all the listener is going to hear are these swishing sounds. And again, I always try and teach people it's always better to go at a slower pace but do it honestly than it is to just fake your way through something and pretend like you're doing something that you're not. Um, why not learn how to do it the right way and, and make it sound the best that you can possibly make it sound? So you'll notice that, again, the guitar is at a bit of an angle. So my pick is a little angled because I'm coming across straight, okay? So I do have a little bit of an angle on the pick to the string, but it's not ridiculous. Um, and that's what I want you to think about a little bit. Again, you have to go by what feels good to you depending on the pick that you're using and the angle that you're most comfortable picking at, that sort of thing. But try and get so you can hear real definition when you're picking that string. And then think about how it sounds as you pick up and down. Trying to get them to sound as even as possible. And it might not be perfect, but just work on that a little bit. The next thing to think about is as you're picking, and this might change a little bit depending on the speed that you go, is whether or not you're picking from the wrist, the wrist is doing the movement for the guitar pick, or whether or not the elbow is doing the movement, okay? Most of the time, those are the two points, is you'll either lock at the elbow as you pick, and you'll move like this, or you'll move more from the wrist. Now, I've seen people move a little bit more from the fingers, but, I mean, usually there's a combination of these things, but again, it might be nice to just think about that a little bit as you're playing. Are you locking that elbow and moving like this? Or are you moving from the wrist? Just to kind of get used to, because you're going to use the muscles in a different way depending on what it is that you're doing. So, going back to our exercise now, with those things in mind that we would just practice beforehand, um, you know, you could just work on those things for a long time. You could work on those on a daily basis just to develop those. And then you could come back to whatever pattern or whatever thing that you're working on, which is what I'm using right here, is this 5857. And I'm going to implement what I've been doing with these this down and up picking, trying to clean it all up and watch my pick angle and, you know, trying to even out the dynamic of the pick on both sides, all that stuff. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to start adding in down, up, down, up. As I'm doing this, it's really important for you to try and learn how to relax your muscles. Okay, a lot of times as you start practicing something, especially when it's new, you'll have a tendency of tightening up and tensing up. And the problem with that is, is that you're going to wear out a lot faster and 
you know, you're going to cause yourself a lot more pain uh, in doing that. So the trick is to always try and stay as loose as possible as you're playing. And again, this is where you're going to start figuring out whether you move more from the wrist or whether you move more from the, the, the elbow or the bicep, depending on how you want to look at it, to try and do this sort of picking. Again, it's not just about how fast I can go, it's trying to clean everything up and make all of those picks, all, all of the picking that I'm doing, have some element of definition as I'm playing. <laughs> So it's a really good thing to get used to in the long run if you're not really much of an alternate picker. I'm not saying you have to do everything alternate picking. That's not what I'm saying. But it's nice to have the availability. I always think of it like, you know, having one leg versus two. It, 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 there, there are certainly benefits to having both legs functioning, um, you know, to, to move faster and more efficient and that sort of thing. Um, Certainly, if you're getting chased by, you know, a dog or something like that, and you want to try and get away without getting mauled, it'd be nice to be able to go fast, right? So there are times that it is nice to be able to do that. And alternate picking isn't just about speed. It's also about just having this fluency when you play. You know, where a lot of times what's really cool about down picking is down picking gives you kind of a real sort of, I call it crow magnet. It's a real kind of heavy to feel, feel when you're playing. And it sounds awesome, but sometimes you want to you want to smooth that out, and you want something that's a little more flowing as you play. And a lot of times that alternate picking is an opportunity to give you that. So, a little bit of tip there that that might help you in transitioning from your down picking to alternate picking or to optimize your optim uh, uh, alternate picking a little bit as well. So take care, practice hard, and I'll speak to you soon. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you'd like to learn more, then check out the complete course by clicking on the link above or below this video. Thank you so much, take care, and I'll see you soon.